Labor in New South Wales has become a Shakespearean tragedy. Politically, we've entered a completely unknown territory of, of, of chaos and anarchy and madness. You do wonder, uh, with a government in the position of the Rees government, whether or not there isn't sometimes in the morning uh, when the Premier gets up and just thinks, yeah, if I'm very lucky, this could be my last day on earth. As the New South Wales government marches towards the end of 15 years of unbroken rule, it will be the enemy within, it seems, that may finally seal its fate. It's unparalleled, it's unprecedented. And I'm doing this because clearly I'm fighting for truth and justice. The ferocious loyalty that once defined the state labour machine appears to have given way to a new sort of lawlessness, culminating this week with sacked former minister Tony Stewart doing the unthinkable, taking his personal beef with the Premier all the way to the Supreme Court. I'm astonished that the Premier has allowed this to get to the stage it has now. Constitutional experts say Stewart's challenge to the Premier's right to hire and fire ministers is almost certainly doomed, but it does say something about the dire state of the government. He's actually trying to challenge hundreds of years of Westminster Convention about what it means to be a minister. Convention says you're a minister as long as the Prime Minister or Premier reckons you're a minister. And when you're Gonski, is when he says you're Gonski. In some ways, this is a family law case. Uh, it's a case within the family of the New South Wales Labor Party. And there isn't going to be a resolution that's going to make everybody fall in love again. Uh, it's gone too far. Once they decided to kill Maurice Yammer, the first time they'd ever murdered one of their own sitting Premiers, all bets were off. Do you think you'll still be Premier at the end of the meeting? It's just 11 months since the Labor factional warlords banished the elected Premier, Maurice Yemmer, to political oblivion. They didn't want to do it my way. They can get on without me. I pledge my loyalty to Australia. And to the, the Crown was handed to Nathan Rees, the state's third I Premier, Premier in just four Sorry. years. Right from the start, Premier Rees tried desperately to mark himself out as a hairy-chested leader of men, the straight-shooting saviour of a government already on its last gasp. I will be having a red-hot go at fixing the problems in New South Wales. Just two days into office, Premier Rees had claimed his first scalp after the police minister, Matt Brown, was seen in his office, dirty dancing in his underpants during a critical parliamentary debate. I said on day one we would clean a joint up and uh, if there's anyone in the caucus or anyone else who wants to try me out again on this, go your hardest. Three weeks later, Premier Rees would make a decision that has dogged his leadership ever since. The new small business minister, Tony Stewart, accused by his policy advisor, Tina Sanger, of berating her at a charity dinner. She also claimed he'd held down her leg and reduced her to tears, allegations hotly denied by Stuart. The investigation comes back that he has lied to me. Uh, his foot won't touch the ground. Premier Rees ordered an independent investigation, which ultimately upheld Sanger's version of events. Stuart was sacked on the spot but was so enraged, he immediately launched a fight-back campaign. Within days, various celebrities at the dinner had come to his defence, insisting they'd seen nothing untoward at all. Sanger's credibility also came under attack, including revelations about her past life as a pole dancer. Public support has rallied behind me for the simple reason I'm telling the truth. My life has been destroyed as I knew it. Stuart's sacking was also the beginning of mutinous rumbles over the Premier's leadership style, starting with the open revolt by several backbenchers who were appalled by the way Stuart had been treated. The dismissal of him from the Ministry does not just anger or infuriate me, and I know many others. Speaking for myself, it totally sickens, sickens me. Rees has had, instead of a uh, honeymoon, he's really had a nightmare. But even more crippling for the Premier has been the extraordinary treachery of his own Cabinet colleagues. 
As each new poll has revealed an even further slump in support for the government, there's been constant speculation about a leadership coup. What we've seen over the last 11 months is a headless Labor Party and a Labor Party in which there really is only plotting. There's barely a, a narrative through it. In the past week alone, there's been a fresh round of reports. The Health Minister, John Della Bosca, was ready to make his move. For months now, I, I, wake up to, I wake up to these yarns. I, I haven't seen one for six weeks or so, so it's about time there was another one, and here it is. And yet another round of denials. Well, there are no plans. Um, the media reports this morning are simply wrong. There is no plan, there is no backers. The Supreme Court of Appeal yesterday reserved their decision on what grounds, if any, the court has to adjudicate Stewart's grievances with the Premier. My life has been destroyed as I knew it. It's everyone's right to have fair and reasonable justice, and I'm the mouse that roared. But the Supreme Court may be the least of the Premier's problems, as each day flushes out yet another minister gunning for his job, and increasingly lame assurances of Cabinet solidarity. Premier, has peace broken out in the Labor Party? Yes, is the short answer. With the polls showing certain annihilation in the next election, it's now become a grim exercise in just trying to save what seats they can. Life can be utterly miserable for a government when every single one of the planet seems to have turned against it, particularly if you've got a, a fixed term, uh, so that your capacity even to commit suicide is extremely limited. It does have the last days of the Roman Empire feel about it. One cabinet minister said to me recently when I asked him, well, can you win in 2011? He actually laughed at me and said, mate, all we want to do is land the jumbo with the undercarriage still attached. That is their universal ambition. Nobody for a moment thinks that they can win. Your special subject is emissions trading schemes. Your time starts now. What is an emissions trading scheme? An emissions trading scheme is effectively an arrangement whereby companies and producers of pollutant emissions are operating within a regulating framework which governs the allowable amount of those emissions and the cost of any offsetting credits. Correct. What is cap and save system? It's, very, it's effectively the same thing. It's effectively the same thing. Correct. 